Hello fellow miniature painters, my name is Kuro Cleanbrush and today I'm going to teach you the wonders of how to make and use wet palettes. Before we get started though, we have the important question of what is a wet palette and why would I want to use one to paint? And that is an important question indeed, and one I wish I knew the answer to when I started painting, because like many of you, I started painting with a traditional dry palette, where you just essentially put your paint on a slab of plastic and you maybe have 15, 20, 25 minutes worth of working time, which isn't very long, especially if you start to mix colors, you get really uh, tired of having to remix constantly and your paint consistency is changing from the start to the finish of the project. And it makes it very hard to produce nice consistent results. So wet palette helps buy you some extra working time by um, either through the use of a wetted sponge, or if you want to just make your own wet palette, wetted paper towels, uh, and a permeable barrier such as parchment paper between that sponge and your paint as the water evaporates off of the paint puddle. It, the water from the sponge will soak through the parchment paper into your paint puddle and keep it at approximately the same consistency that you started at, buying you so much more working time and just making the process of painting that much funner and that much easier, which is always a great deal. So whether you're using a ready-made uh, store-bought palette, um, such as the Masterson Stay Wet Palette, which is a very uh, commonly used miniature painting palette, or if you're just going to use a plate and some paper towels, the process is pretty simple. Take a, take a nice big glass of water or just go to your sink and thoroughly wet your sponge or uh, paper towels. I like to make sure that the sponge is sopping wet, but not a whole lot of extra water around uh, and outside the sponge. This keeps it uh, neat and tidy for me, and I don't have to worry about uh, excess water, uh, maybe just getting on top of my parchment paper and diluting my paint. So, um, same same deal with, with both the store-bought and the homemade um, wet palettes. Just get your sponge all ready, then take your parchment paper, uh, cut it into little squares. I like to use uh, Reynolds parchment paper just because I can find it easily at my local grocery stores. It is a um, it is a cooking uh, material, I guess to say the best. It's waxless wax paper essentially, so you'll find it right next to the wax paper. I believe it can be used for cookie baking and everything, and miniature painting, making it a very useful material. Then just take your parchment paper and lay it down on top of your sponge and take your fingers and just spread the parchment paper over the surface of the sponge because what it's going to start to do is it's going to start to roll on you as one side of the parchment paper wets and the other side remains dry. So you just got to keep fighting with it. It'll take a few seconds but it'll eventually start to bend to your will and just keep doing that. I like to spread it in both directions and then once I've got it kind of starting to stay put I'll take the paper up, flip it over, and put it back down on the other side so that the curling action of the paper actually works for you. And then I kind of like to whisk away a little bit of the excess water so that you don't have water droplets sitting on the top ready to dilute your paint farther than you were wanting it to be diluted. Some people actually like those water droplets and use them for paint dilution, but that's that's not what I do. so. Uh, whatever works for you is the bottom line there. And now I'll show you how to put some paint on one of these and really work with the paint while it's on the paint palette. So next step when using a wet palette is obviously to get some paint on it. So I'm going to take a bottle of my Reaper HD Master Series paint here and shake it up real quick and then I'm going to put down a drop for you. I like to squeeze out 
a little bit more in drop. Get yourself a nice little puddle there. Hopefully you can see that clearly. And then, a little trick for you, if you want to keep your dropper bottles from clogging, wipe off the tip and then squeeze it and run with the tip pointing up and uh, run some air through it. And if you can hear the air flowing through it, that means you don't have a clogged tip and you can help prevent clogs in the future. Save me a bunch of time and hopefully it'll save you a few seconds of paint on clogging time too. After that, we need to actually take our paint puddle and water it down usually because straight out of the pot, straight out of the bottle is pretty much too thick for anything. So go ahead and I like to dip my paintbrush in my water and load it up so that the bristles are just saturated with it. I don't know if it's going to focus for me here. Yeah, I'll have a, if I've been painting for a while, I'll have a nice just drop of water sitting on the tip of the bristles. And I take that and I work it into the paint. And I kind of just do a circular motion here. I uh, am very gentle when I do this, so I don't really worry about whether I'm using a nice brush or a bad brush. It, it doesn't seem to damage them for me. And I kind of work them in little circles. And at that point, all that's left to do is check the consistency of the paint. And the wet palette helps you with that too. Sometimes it's hard to figure out the consistency of a paint straight out of a dropper or straight out of a pot. But on the wet palette, all you have to do is pick up some of the paint and drag it. And you can see if it's going to leave brush strokes behind based on how it behaves on the paper. I'll zoom in here for you a little bit and hopefully you can see this a bit better. There we go. See, we're not really we're we're not really getting many brush strokes here. This would be a pretty good consistency for layers, uh, for layering or, or maybe base coating. Maybe you can sometimes use a little bit thicker layer for the base coating. If you're ever unsure, um, I like to use the back of my thumb as a uh, practice test palette and to remove excess paint from my brush. And you can wipe it on your thumb and see how it covers your skin. If instead of wanting to get uh, some layering done, you want to do a glaze, well, the wet palette's awesome for that too. I generally actually use a uh, dropper bottle instead of just trying to add the brushes, uh, the brushfuls of water at this point. So you just break out your dropper bottle of water and add lots of water, five, six, seven drops maybe. Depends on how thick you want your, how, how transparent I should say, you want your glaze and then I mix it up yet again. And this time you should really be able to see as you drag the uh, paint across the palette that it's really beating up on you. It's It uh, doesn't want to spread too well. It's going to beat up on itself. If I mixed it a little bit better, you'd see a little bit more of this. But if I spread it really thin, you can see that. Alternatively, another way you can check the consistency of your glazes is to take your thumb, and I'll hopefully let the camera focus on me here. There we go. And brush it across your thumbnail. And if you can still see through, you you can uh, you can you know that you're you've got a pretty good glaze. This is probably a little bit thick still. See how in portions it's transparent and in portions it's not. But hey, this wet palette is going to keep this puddle at uh, approximately the same wetness and thinness that we started at. So it's very easy to just add more water and get it exactly where we need it to be for our glaze. Once you're done with your wet palette, cleanup is pretty easy. If you've made a glaze or a wash kind of like we did here, um, be careful when you're picking up your parchment paper that you don't let the paint run onto your sponge or it'll soak it up and usually it comes out with some water but it's just nice not to have a multicolored sponge so you can kind of tell um, you, you can tell better the color of your paint without having background interference from all kinds of different colors on the sponge. The sponge is a little bit more difficult to care for because mold is the big enemy. Um, since this thing stays wet all the time, and just like any other sponge, it can uh, start to mold on you. So um, if you're just done with your paints for the day or and you're going to be painting again in the next day or two, I like to just leave my parchment paper, leave my paints on there, and use your nice sealing lid. This is something you can't do with uh, your homemade uh, wet palette, but with the store-bought wet palette, this seals very nicely. So you can 
keep your paints like in the fridge and use them again tomorrow or the next day. It, it'll add some longevity to the paints you put on it. Otherwise, I just take this sponge, wring it out nice and thoroughly, maybe rinse it out, and I like to apply a little bit of vinegar. Some people use bleach. I've heard of some people using copper pennies to help fight bacteria. Whatever it takes, just do something to help fight mold and keep your, your um, sponge nice and mold free for as long as possible. If it does start to mold, I've heard you can wash it with bleach and get them back to normal. And with that, I think that's pretty much all there is to the basics of a wet palette. Definitely give it a try. You will love the results if you've been painting for a long time with a dry palette. You won't believe the difference. I tried it once and was sold for all time. So thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Happy miniature painting.